vision is that we remain completely synchronized with Wikipedia and Wikidata at all times, uh, because that's where the source is. Okay? Um, it's also worth mentioning at this point that as an open data project, um, Historypedia is completely free to use. Uh, it's publicly editable, and all timelines are created on the site are published under an open license, so they can be reused by anyone. We're getting very, very close to this vision of the timeline of everything in history. We're really, we're really close. We're not quite there just yet. Um, but along the way, we're creating some really amazingly powerful tools for creating timelines. Things that are quite new, but have never really been 
things that they really face. And look, there's the Great Fire of London. Uh, this particular area was affected by the Great Fire of London in 1666. Uh, we go on after that, St Paul's Cathedral was built just after the Great Fire of London, and then the Bank of England was formed. And we can see the story of this local area playing out uh, day by day, if we want, if that data exists. Uh, and we can zoom all the way, we'll just scroll through and take this in for a moment. We've got to the London Olympics there. And I think we'll probably even find, should be, I think back a little bit, I think around the 1980s, the Barbican Centre. There's a few bombings, there's always a few bombings in there. There's the Barbican Centre, which of course should be here, it is within two kilometres of us. And it's a real relative baby compared to all this amazing, rich local history. So we could generate this time on and we could just go on a walk and find the oldest things in our local area, just like that. I would imagine if that was working from your mobile phone or tablet, just tell me what's around and what's around me right now. So, I mean, this is the power of Wikidata being expressed visually. It's just worth pointing that out. Uh, it's Wikidata that gave us the power to get these incredible results back. We simply ask a question and it provides us with the answer and then we present it in our own unique way, just like anyone else could with different visualizations. Now, it is such a cool feature, we could not leave it with one simple query, so we're going to run another one. Uh, this one is the descendants of Queen Victoria. And a simple query, it's just for Wikidata has followed down Queen Victoria's line of children and children and children and children. And in a few seconds, it's presented with a timeline that would have taken us many days to create. Now, there's something really interesting to point out here. Our ranking system, which is based on Wikipedia backlinks to every event, uh, enables us to judge which are the most important ones. So in our current zoom, quite zoomed out, we can see only the most important events. Important with inverted commas. <laughs> now, in this instance, because it's these descendants, you can actually see that that tends to be the line of kings and queens, or people who were nearly king, or nearly a queen. And so it's the ranking system combined with the power of the query is giving us this instant overview, uh, a picture of the situation without having to work for it. Now let's just zoom in a little bit, just to demonstrate how the ranking system will now reveal uh, sort of less important, if you like, people. And it tends to be more and more distant relatives in this case. So, family tree timelines are just easy with Wikidata. We could have done all relatives, we could have been more broad and gone out in every direction. Uh, we actually did try that, um, but it seems the Queen Victoria's related to just about everyone in the world. <laughs> we, we don't quite have the performance yet for thousands and thousands of things at the time. It's going very soon. Um, okay, so let's just do one more query now. Uh, let's just do, just for the fun of it, really, to be honest. Uh, let's do a query on paintings, and we're gonna just pick out portrait paintings from Wikidata. So we're looking at all portrait paintings. Now, we, we could choose anything here, and we could choose only portrait paintings from a certain city or country or anything else. Wikidata is normally a little faster than this. I don't know if it's probably our internet. Uh, 
initial nature of this project means that you can actually spot uh, errors in Wikidata and Wikipedia much more easily in some situations. Now, um, I think I'm going to stop that work. Let's see what is happening. Um, so one of the examples that we're going to show you, and I'm going to have to use really big hand signals here to try and demonstrate this. Um, we were going to just show you that we made a query of people. Oh, here we go. Hey, well done, Wikidata. Now, the query that we've just loaded is a query of uh, people born in London between 1925 and 1930. So it's a very specific query. Now, you'll notice that all of these people over here, uh, they're all behaving themselves. They're exactly where they should be. Uh, but then there's one person who's obviously completely out of place, uh, and they jump out of you immediately. Now, it turns out the Wikipedia article actually agrees with what we have there. So we can follow this link to get back to the Wikidata item straight from within our site. And when we get to the Wikidata page, we, all we have to do is just find the source of this mistake that we just spotted so visually. And then the problem is two dates of birth, so a community member can then pick out the wrong date and 
actually want to zoom in a little bit further just to see exactly what happened in a single day, but that's coming later. Now, so just in a few moments, like less than a minute, we've got up this World War I timeline, and you can see the idea that you can pick and choose any element of history that you like and put it together, and you can combine it with Wikidata queries or Wikipedia categories if you like as well. Uh, but this is going to be the prime way that anyone can come along and do this. So, uh, what we'd like to do now is we're just going to zoom all the way out for a minute, uh, just to see, we've seen all this detail around the war, but we just want to expand on this timeline, and because we've got this crazy idea that we want to expand it into a much bigger picture of history, we're just going to have a timeline of empires, so, uh, stretching back over 4,000 years. And with one click of the mouse, got two. That's 4,000 years of history added to our timeline, in addition to our World War I picture. <coughs> just zoom out for a minute, just to take in what we've done there. Uh, that's got hundreds and hundreds of events on it, and we made the whole thing in about a minute or a bit there. So, just zoom out to see that whole picture for a moment. And we're going to see only the most important things. Uh, so, there you have it. It's just like playing Lego with history. And um, <laughs> thank you all for listening. We would love to hear any questions in the last few minutes that we've got. I don't think it's long. But uh, okay, so yeah, fire away with any questions. I did see a hand up over here before. Yeah, okay. Um, can you use this with any language or um, At the moment, it's just we're starting in English, but really, uh, it's trivial to go into multi languages thanks to Wikidata once again. So it's Wikidata. <coughs> yeah, what we'll end up with is, um, as well as having everything else in other languages, when you open the Wikipedia your article, you'll just get the version in whatever language you've selected. Uh, it would be very simple for us to just add that in later on. Well, one here and then we've got 
way to do it because we can't go with any one person's view or any one corporation's view or any one single view of history. So I think the only way we can do it is through through a democratic system like the like Peter has shown us can actually work very, very well. Yeah, I think we'd like to think of ourselves uh, ourselves as a platform for arguments. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be, uh, I mean, I just can't imagine the arguments are going to happen. I think we're done. Uh, thank you very much, story. everyone.
to a large extent. Uh, Project Gutenberg has possibly got the better uh, process, um, which its source is much more open. Um, I've added stuff to both. Um, how do you how do they, you cooperate or agree to uh, divide up the, uh, the world? Well, let me let me sort of take that myself first because I'm a Wikipedia person who went on to Wiki source to add specific work for the international biography. Um, Gutenberg is great, and a lot of content initiatives imported from the source from Project Gutenberg. You might ask, why? Wow, just mirroring, and that's all a problem with all text repositories. What's your unique selling point? And that where we can sort it now is about adding value to the text, not just the text. And one of the ways we add value is by all the pages. All the pages now are taken into Wikidata. So it's exactly the point that the wiki source is becoming a junction between sister projects that is interesting about wiki source. You're simply interested in proofreading stuff and not concerned about all the data or metadata and so on. So maybe add to that? Uh, I source 
still has the problem that it hasn't out completed all the other projects. No, but that's true. That's and, true. and none of them talk much about efficiency. If, if a volunteer has an hour to spend, uh, do you scan and proofread the book faster in Wikisource than in other projects? And this is something that could give Wikisource an edge if, if we start to focus on that. Do you have a suggestion? Like has, has anybody spell checking or whatever? I mean, has anybody like thought, of, thought of that aspect? I think the strength of the community is as small and it's not a Wikipedia. So I, I believe that there's a level of thoroughness which we're looking to. It's a drop in, drop out site, so you don't have to be part of yourself to that side of it is. But I don't see that, we don't see it as a competition to be better than anybody else. We just wish to be the most wiki and most useful through the, through the combination of the family. I don't so think that answers the question. But I mean, I suppose when you can get to work that Dominic's been doing, so Dominic's had organised a whole lot of scans from Seminars that are going into Commons, and then anyone from Commons can come, get it, and transcribe, and that's a document. I can't see, you know, that's a page, so it's not just one aspect. 
huge number of unfinished projects on Wikisource. Uh, how do the oh, panel uh, <laughs> suggest that that problem could be addressed? You could delete stuff, but what's the point of that? Then you have an unstarted program. Well, it's like a historical <laughs> answer or a real answer. It, it's, a, it's, a wiki, it's a wiki answer, which is work in progress, it's what we do. It's unusual to finish a wiki. Um, but there is a difference between an unfinished article and an unfinished book. Uh, yeah, I mean, I prefer stuff to finish. Uh, I work on the DMB project, and there's also a Britannic project we've heard of. The DMB project is finished, but I don't know why that happened, because I made sure it did. I mean, I had about 29 other collaborators, but, you know, I wanted it to be finished. That's rather unusual, but it's much more useful if it is finished, but under wiki principles, nobody gets assigned in the work. So that's simply how it is. And if people start thinking on a holding basis they don't finish, it may be irritating, but it's better than nothing. Except, of course, if it, it's sort of bad money pushing out a good kind of idea, which is the, it's the downside there. It, no, it's simply a fact of life that a site like this also have unfinished projects on. Yeah, sure. I think Wikisource is a smaller community. It's full of enthusiasts. We don't have a lot of technical people. We have built a very uh, good and caring community. We don't have what I call the bitch fight front sites generally. We, keep that, we try to keep it ourselves in line. We coordinate certain projects, but certain people will come in, start a book, don't like doing it, uh, or other bits of real life takes them away. We could concentrate on that book or we could concentrate on another work. I need so much work that volunteers can do. Um, but we coordinate on projects. So I think I heard a talk earlier today that talked about actually getting the right number of volunteers together rather than the right number of edits in place. And so it's about you coming to help if you'd like to contribute that book and we will help you to do that. And we didn't want to take the I just meant to add to the 
it's, it's new, um, but we're going through some teething hurdles. We're learning that we need to better communicate across, across Wiki, across to other sites, um, and we're working on it. Um, once we get the, those teething issues out of the way over the next couple of weeks, I think we can get the community comfortable with what the process is. I think we can go full steam ahead, then it's up to these guys to the, the place they put the best. That's certainly part of the future, it's a good place to finish up here. I believe there's a Wikisource meetup later today. Does anybody in the room have any details about it? <laughs> uh, 6.30 in here. 6.30 in here, there's a Wikisource meetup. Okay. Um,
bad Wikipedia, where maybe it was after one article, I'm crazy from scratch, and I've done about 10 edits otherwise. But I do try, it's really not very good at it. Give um, you a contribution. Yeah, I've done something. I have also been, over the last kind of five years, interested in trying to get more civil servants and people in the public sector in the UK to contribute directly, properly, rather than trying to just fiddle around without um, attribution and without registering. So I've done stuff with the Medical Research Council and various other organisations. Um, I currently have this ridiculous job title as Head of Digital Transformation, which I was really embarrassed to find that there's actually a um, Wikipedia article and really an article about everything. Um, but part of my job, my main job is to um, build a new website for the Office for National Statistics website, which if anyone's ever experienced it, is currently created as the worst website in government. Um, we actually have an entire article in the Financial Times just saying how bad the website was, and a Parliamentary Affairs Committee just discussing how bad it was. So it's no question, but part of my job is to change the, the culture in the organisation and to get them to encourage them to use new tools. So I've been taking that as an advantage to integrate kind of wiki and thinking into the organisation. Um, and what this talk mainly is about is I'm going to bang through some slides, but I actually, we've got ideas, we're sold on the idea of using Wikipedia and Wikimedia and data and all that sort of thing. We're just not quite sure how to get the best out of it. And we don't want to just kind of bumble along and try and go our own way. We want to get some feedback on the future to tell us where we can best add some value. Um, so I work for the Office of National Statistics. Um, for those who don't know, we're the main uh, supplier of statistics in the UK. We do the census. We do most of the economic data, we do most of the population, the innovation, innovation data, that sort of thing. Um, the, we produce an awful lot of, of stuff. And we kind of bumbled into being uh, open data without really thinking it through, um, just because of the nature of the work that we do. We have a unique situation in the, since 2008, we don't answer to any ministers or anyone directly in government in this country. We have a UK Stats Authority, so we who are our overseers, who mean we only answer to Parliament. So the idea was to try and create a firewall between the organisation and um, part of politics. I'm not saying it always works. And the faces is basically um, the opposition constantly says we're doing stats to support the government, and the government constantly say we're doing stats to support the opposition. So you can't really win, but there is this kind of firewall built into it. Um, but well, because we have this we have this relationship with the Stats Authority and we're quite close to they are also responsible for all the other statisticians in government. So if we can sell this idea of wiki working, we can do it very in a very wide scale. And we also have a relationship with Eurostat, which is all the statisticians in government across all the European community. Um, they have various kind of quite old fashioned views about um, using Wikipedia. Lots of them are quite nervous about it and quite lots of edgy, but they've been very interested in the fact we've already started dipping our toes into this area, particularly the Dutch and the Germans. But generally, there's kind of, everyone's got a demand on them these days to improve communication and statistics. Um, all the research kind of demonstrates that people really, really don't understand the data and want more news stories and use it to, to sell their, their stories. And we also have this kind of wider community as well. Um, we're particularly close to, not surprisingly, the other English language, so the US, New Zealand, and Australia. They've all kind of dipped their toes into this area as well, but no one's really kind of grasped what to do with Wikipedia, how we can move forward. Because one of the interesting things that I discovered, I only joined 18 months ago, and uh, I'd already been involved in Wikipedia a lot longer, and I'm a long way from a statistician. Um, so I didn't really have that great a grasp on it, but it's interesting that the neutral point of view stuff, which is one of the first things that Martin who's in the room taught me about uh, Wikipedia, uh, the room training session, is very much the same language that the organisation uses about how it needs to present statistics and analysis, very much about things being neutral and politically neutral, and, and, um, and a lot of the words are very similar, a lot of the tone is very similar. So actually the way that the organisation thinks about itself is very kind of copacetic with how Wikipedia thinks about its articles. And also, we kind of, we kind of fell into using um, the Open Government Licence, which is a UK open licence, which, kind of, which is basically um, the equivalent to Creative Commons attribution. Oh, I guess it is now, and this is the 2.0 version. Um, 
Although we did, um, John Cummings, who's involved in this conference, came and did a talk with us and convinced us we've added 150 plus charts and infographics and things of that to Google Commons. Um, they were already on um, Flickr over, uh, with, with the equivalent Creative Commons license, so we just moved them away over. Um, we didn't really expect much of it, we didn't, we've not, we never really talked about it yet. Um, but they're starting to pop up on various articles and stuff, which is nice to see. They are starting to have a little bit of an impact. Um, we've never really known what to do. The reason is it's one of the other segments. It became clear we do very big infographics which didn't fit on Wikipedia pages, so we sort of just slice them up a little bit and see if that works better for people. But it's very much just trying to feel our way around it. Because if, when you go through, particularly for the UK pages, an awful lot of our data is involved, you know, all of the public stuff. You know, we do the census. We have the experts for the census data in our buildings. Um, a huge amount of this page references ONS data given directly or one removed. Um, that some of the analysis of it isn't always what we would consider valid, but you know, we do have the kind of expertise to really look at these pages. Um, for anyone in the UK would recognize my accent as soon as I started speaking, or for anyone else, my hometown. Um, basically, um, this, is, this is the only page I've made any edits to particularly, and that's because I've worked out how I get census data, correct census data from one place to the other, and I've added my, my tweet and updated some of these pages. Um, but it just demonstrates how much of the stuff that we've got is immediately useful. Um, the stuff on the economy is a little bit trickier. We do have, um, there's a lot of nerds about certain topics around the economy, about us getting involved. Um, actually, the stuff that comes out of the census is an easy sell, and people don't get that worried about what we're going to do with it, whereas actually the stuff around the economy, people get very twitchy. Um, Hannah, who might be in the room, they, they, this is, um, if anyone's from the UK would have come across the kind of zero hours kind of scandal that we've recently gone through and a big kind of critical issue in the UK. Um, it was a section in this page. Um, ONS was released the first data on zero hours contracts. It became a really big news story. Um, it was very much misreported. Um, we wanted to change the Wikipedia article because it was clear that was getting the most traffic. Um, we tried to do it properly, we went in and explained why we wanted to change it, we didn't just go in, we didn't want to be one of those government departments that got identified as just going and making changes quietly and anonymously. So we talked about why we wanted to do it and how we wanted to do it. Um, no one actually came back, so we never got an editor or have it, no one came back to, to the point of mention it to talk to us about this, so we made the change anyway, no one's ever complained. But we tried to do it right, but we just want to show you that just in case. Um, yeah, cheers. <laughs> there we go. So, um, so we try to be, we, we do, um, we have official training and we have a whole host currently of what we call fast streamers, which are kind of graduate trainees who go through the civil service very quickly. Uh, we found a lot more success training them and encourage them to use Wikipedia to engage with than we had with some of the more senior people. Um, they're all very well qualified, they're all very well trained. Um, and we started to kind of discuss that kind of like, there's actual objectives to actually do, to do some of this work, so it's actually part of their job. Um, but this was initially the thing that really excited me. Um, John Cummings came to do a talk early on in my time at OMS. Um, I signed up and he talked about Wikidata. It was quite early doors for Wikidata at the time. Um, I only knew a little bit from their pages. Um, I've come to this event and realised that everybody's talking about it pretty much continuously. So at least it's clear that it's, clear that it's a, a really big deal. Um, I've learned a lot more this morning about it than I knew previously, and I'm now I'm, I'm second guessing myself about whether it's really the way forward. But nonetheless, this is the thing that kind of really excites us because we're working, we're building a new OS website, we're talking about how to make our data more machine readable. We've, we've got APIs now. Um, Eurostat, the way that you can use stuff has got an API which makes the stuff shareable. Um, we want to try and increase this kind of machine readable amount of data, getting out there, allowing other people to do stuff with it. And the reality is, people are much more likely to find it through Wikipedia or Wikidata than they're going to go and find it on any of our individual websites. So we want to take that opportunity. But what we want to do is we want to do it in the way that people find useful and the community finds useful. And if, and if this isn't the right way, then we're happy 
managed to get enough cash together so we could have a Wikipedia in residence. I uh, have no idea what to do with them, because clearly all the Wikipedias in residence pretty much today have been in the glam area for the most part. We're a long way from that. We don't have a big archive of stuff that we want to put the turn into open and get it online. Uh, we want to, but we want to do something. We can see that there's something there. We're just not quite sure how to, how to go about it. But we also have to change the kind of attitude at the moment. In the last three or four months, there's been a pretty much a steady stream of kind of semi-scandals involving civil servants and Wikipedia. You know, people in various government departments going there and making ridiculous changes in their lunch times. So I read something earlier today from a tweet that said, vandalism happens in nine to five when you're at work and real contributions happen late at night. And it's clear that civil servants vandalise during the day, and um, despite the fact this keeps happening, have no idea they're going to get caught. Um, so we want to change the narrative about this, and we want to kind of make it a, a useful, active community, and to get in and, and to be a, get a contribution. Because otherwise, the way things like the civil service work, they start to think it's too much of a risk, and they shut it down completely. They go back to where we were a couple of years ago, where they just say actually. It's too risky to implement it, they okay, just get blocked everywhere, and civil service will be sold not to interact with it, and that would be a massive loss on both sides, I think. Um, so, yeah, this is another one. So, basically, these little IP cache spots, so um, the various people that are working there are catching people pretty much weekly at the moment. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I haven't really got anything else to say. It was, it was, it's much more about you've seen a little bit about what we've got. We've got huge amount of open data, we've got analysis, which is uh, neutral, we've got various images, we've got graphs and charts and all this sort of stuff. We just want to work out how best to share it, how best we can contribute, and I'm open to any ideas. Um, Suddenly my Twitter name's been there all the way through, um, so you're there to check, I'll be around for the next couple of days as well, and you can obviously ask me any questions.
identify where there's where we think there are errors or mis or mis explanations and that sort of thing, and then we're trying to flag them in the talk cases. If no one comes back, we're making changes at the moment. But we're trying to do that. My, my preference would be that that actually we don't we, we aren't the ones who are making all the edits because there, there's always going to be accusations of kind of bias and that, but, but that we just kind of we identify why there might be a problem and we point people where the, the data is. Um, but we'll take that, we can move kind of that forward. One, one, one more question, quickly. Um, just a question about um, data collected from you know, way, way, way back. Uh, uh, so, say for example, I wanted to create a population table in the city of Bristol, yeah. where you're from, and um, I wanted to get population figures for 1200 AD. Yeah. Um, are those figures digitized in the database? Would they be easily accessible if they are? If they're not, what would be the process? They are, they're, they're, they're easily accessible back to about the 60s. Okay. Um, beyond that, there's a there's previous um, censuses that are available from um, from our one of our university partners who are based in Manchester. You can look at, we can appeal or you can come through us and we can make this that stuff available. Basically they're they're doing a digitization job because obviously it was all hard for the we've got a university who are currently digitizing a like back records the census data for us, back as far as we can find it. Um, it's a slow job and it's part of the deal essentially when they are um, making the digitization there's a, there's a small kind of more term of time where it's still only available to the UK research community and then we make it more available widely. Um, but we're certainly having those discussions, you know, and we want to be able to have to show a really, really long time series for some of these things where we've got it as one of our ambitions is to do that. Um, okay, that's my point. Thank you very much for coming in. Days trying to get to 